In this update, we've got a lot of moving parts happening in the weather department over the next 10 to 12 days. So we're really going to dive into the details this afternoon and break it down for you so you can plan ahead and know what to expect. Let's start off with the big picture. Moving forward, we've got this pretty significant trough that's moving in into our western regions across the Pacific Northwest. That's got some cooler pocket of air and pulling in some chillier rains, especially along the coastal regions. We've got a reinforcing shot that's going to be coming across back behind it. But out ahead of it, we've got what they call zonal flow, and that is a warm flow, folks, for really much of the country. You can actually see this blue line here. That is your freezing line that has actually now retreated back up into Canada. So there's a lot of warm air that's really locked in across a good part of the United States. And that's why we've got a lot of record high temperatures to deal with this afternoon. In fact, we've got up to possibly 52 record high temperatures that could unfold across these regions where they are experiencing that more zonal flow. That's that Pacific flow, a warm flow that's coming off. And all those areas encircled here, that is your potential record high temperatures well into the 80s across Texas, even some 90s starting to take shape across West Texas. Those 80s spread into Oklahoma, all the way into the Southeast, and even an extend as far north as Virginia, folks. So there's a lot of areas experiencing some plenty warm, if not almost hot conditions for November standards. If you actually take it to tomorrow, we've got even more record high temperatures even another 29 could unfold. So yes, we're like we're talking 81 record high temperatures over the next two days. So we're waiting on that trough, right? That's a cold front that's going to be diving in from the northwest to the southeast and replace of that for the next two days. Here's your precipitation front. So we're going to have, you know, still some precipitation is going to be ringing out of that trough you know, through these regions, through Idaho, through portions of Utah, back into Wyoming, all the way into the Rockies regions. And then further north where that, uh, you know, that, that blue line's kind of like retreated, it does have some instability, but again, it's far extreme portions of the Great Lakes region. You can already, already see the Southwest flow that's starting to kind of overturn the atmosphere in anticipation of that cold front that will be moving in so right now for the next two days you're kind of high and dry but things are going to be changing with along that cold front with precipitation likely starting to be breaking out across this region back behind it here's your snow that's going to unfold over the next two days across the intermountain west that is going to reach the rockies and some of that could actually reach the denver region back into the colorado springs region going into that Thursday time frame. So back ahead of it, here's your overall cold front where it's going to be elongated on your Thursday afternoon. So I think the cold front arrives Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And then back behind the cold front, you'll have what they call overrunning conditions that'll spread in precipitation. So you got the Southwest flow moving in and they're going to be tapping into some of those higher dew points across this region. So we've got some welcome rains moving in. This isn't severe, so this is just light to moderate rain that will be breaking out across North Texas and to Central Texas down into West Texas, and that will shift into Arkansas right along this boundary here through uh, Indiana, through portions of Ohio. That'll swing up into Pennsylvania while the snow still is going to unfold and then dive likely into portions of New Mexico by then but by the time we head into that thursday night friday morning time frame the rain will start to shift further into south south texas you know further shift into arkansas through the mississippi region back into tennessee this will uh, you know continue to move southbound into louisiana uh, back into portions of Alabama and eventually head into the Georgia region. We do have a, you know, a little bit of a clipper system that's going to be coming in across the Great Lakes. That's a reinforcing shot of that colder air. I showed you that blue line. That's that freezing line that will be starting to retreat southbound by then and dragging down some of those colder anomalies and re and and 
entering back in the picture across the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic as well as into portions of New England. While we'll have that secondary system start to unfold and come down from Alaska, enter back into the Pacific Northwest with a reinforcing shot of a chillier rain across these regions into Washington and Oregon and especially into Northern California. But going into that Friday afternoon, Friday night time frame, that's where that cold front is going to be stalling out across the deep South Texas, going into Louisiana, you know, back into the, say, the Mobile region. That will extend into portions of Virginia, into the Carolinas, and head up into portions of the D.C. region uh, while they're waiting for that, uh, you know, colder temperatures to kind of funnel in. So, you know, you, you're going to be, you know, record high temperatures the next two days. So it's going to replace with a cold front. And a lot of these areas are going to be just more or less seasonal averages. That 49 you see here, that's a low temperature. Well, that's actually just average temperatures this time of year for Dallas. But considering where you've been, you know, 64 degrees, that's a 15 degree drop. So it's going to take a cold front just to kind of bring you back to seasonal averages across this region because you're coming from those potential record highs, such elevated high levels. But those freezing conditions and those blue line extend all the way down into t uh, Kansas and that will extend into portions of northern Arizona, you know, by the time you head into Friday morning. So going into the weekend and starting the trend for next week, that's where things get really interesting because we'll be expanding the view now. So we'll go back up to the Pacific Northwest. We've got an even stronger trough that's going to be coming in out of Alaska. That's really going to be diving and digging down here across these regions. And then it will drop much further south than the previous one and actually have much more colder air as well with it, along with its course. While at the same time, with that cold front moving in, that'll be retreating back as a warm front. And these areas will be back into elevated temperatures heading into that Tuesday timeframe of next week. So, wow, all these areas will start to see those elevated anomalies back in the picture above average for a good part of the country. While this trough is going to be digging in back into the West Coast, entering Northern California, but this time it even drops further south. So now these areas in Central California and Southern California will be getting back into the picture with much needed rainfall across this region. You can actually see some instability across Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas again. Well, that's that cold front that will be actually retreating back northbound by then. That causes the atmosphere to overturn and will be ringing out some additional precipitation across this region while we're remaining waiting for the main event to really start taking shape across our western regions. So if we really expand the view on the North American view, you can see that powerful storm off the west coast down to a 980 millibar low pressure. We've been lucking out as far as like severe weather goes because this is the second season for severe weather and we honestly really haven't had much, which is actually a good thing. But that trend may stop next week because we're looking at a pretty significant synoptic setup going forward in the longer range. So that's why we're diving into the details as this significant uh, system that's going to be coming in and really building up a lot of energy. This is around the 15th of the month, November 15th holding down that energy and then raking across with this kind of atmospheric river type setup will funnel in from the Pacific and dumping it inland. So they're going to be talking about some beneficial range. You haven't seen much of anything in a while back into central and southern California. You're going to be getting back into the action with some heavier rainfall across this region that likely starts on the 15th of the month and extends through the 16th and by the end of next week because we'll have this powerful low pressure center that will be coming in 
you know, off the West Coast. This is a 900 and 98 millibar low pressure. Look at the southern branch of the jet stream really getting activated. So it almost takes on that El Nino type characteristics by the time we head into the end of next week in these areas that have been asking like, hey, where's all my rain in Arizona? Where's my rain in New Mexico? Well, there, it's coming back, folks. It's gonna be back into the picture. Complements of this significant trough that's gonna be diving further south and it's going to be tapping into that subtropical jet at the same time that's going to be screaming in more pacific moisture off that and that is the reason why the climate prediction center has highlighted above average rains by then after the 15th of the month through california through nevada through the four corners region and utah and arizona back into New Mexico and to Colorado, then getting back into Texas again, into Oklahoma and into Kansas there. Yeah, you can actually see much of the countries kind of back in the green. I showed you yesterday that vertical velocity index, very elevated. You got a lot of upward rising motion air coming back in the picture. Now we've got that significant subtropical jet stream getting activated. And we got a western trough coming in out of the picture. That's going to provide the lift mechanism that is needed to overturn the atmosphere in a big way. So we're going to be getting some possibly elevated snows out of this picture. Here's what you typically see for a November day as far as like severe storms. This is kind of the favorite area this time of year. This is second season. So it's actually been kind of unusual to not see much of anything but our luck is probably gonna be running out by the time we head into that Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday timeframe heading into next weekend. So, cause if we look at a lot of the ensemble guidance, we look at the upper air guidance going forward, and this is not just the European, a, a lot of global models are kind of hinting at that low pressure center going to be moving inland across the middle of the country so this one's going to be cold enough to likely bring more snow back into nevada back into the flagstaff region back into the santa fe likely albuquerque region into the rockies more snow for the denver and colorado springs region may even get close enough into kansas and nebraska be snowing by then but we also have severe storms that we can be concerned about because these upper level winds are likely going to be screaming across around 52 knots, about 17,000 feet up in the atmosphere. And at the surface, at a lot of the lower levels, we've got a ton of wind shear. So we got a powerful low pressure center bringing in the lift mechanism. And then we got the atmosphere rotating at heights. That spells trouble for severe weather across the southern and central plains by then into that Friday, possibly next weekend time frame, And it's kind of this bullseye in the middle of the country. So right now we're kind of looking at that 17th, 18th, 19th, 19th time frame. If you live in the Southern Plains, you live in the Central Plains, it's kind of one of those things you gotta have to be really too concerned about it right now, but it's also something we have to watch the dynamics moving forward and watch all the pieces of the puzzle start coming together. Because right now the ensemble members have a pretty significant you know, coming together that, hey, we could be looking at, you know, a pretty significant event as far as like severe storms go heading into that next week, weekend time frame. So with that colder air and that more significant trough, here's what the ensemble members are actually printing out right now that could unfold as far as snowfall. This is areas that potentially could see at least three inches of snowfall you know, by then with this system, spreading in some good amounts, possibly into, into Nevada, into Utah, into Arizona, back into uh, New Mexico, but especially further north as you spread into Colorado, into Wyoming, and then some of that will be shifting over into the Dakotas, through, through uh, Nebraska and portions of Kansas by then, but there's the heavier rain. So first you've got the significant trough that's gonna be moving in, across the west coast the second system by the 15th will be diving further south so that puts those 
red paint bomb across central and southern california with multiple inches of rain possibly by then and that shifts those beneficial rains across the four corners regions most some of that could be in the form of snowfall especially in the higher elevations and then you've got the co combination of these several cold fronts that come across and the heavier rains that could be spreading into oklahoma into north and central and eastern texas louisiana into arkansas into mississippi back into uh, alabama here back into tennessee into kentucky this could be a favored setup for possibly severe storms across this region of the central and southern plains by then but then definitely some beneficial rains i don't need to tell you you're bone dry down there in louisiana and mississippi and these areas further south into the southeast going into tennessee so this is actually a welcome sign regardless you know minus the minus the you know the severe storms that could unfold but definitely some beneficial rains across this regions you know as you head into the end of next week so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching i uh, do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update wire protect you before and after the storm